what is stack memory an stack pointer in microcontroller as per its name some of the data are pushed into the memory or you can say stacked into the memory and whenever the use of these data are done these can be pulled out from this stack as you can see here the first data is pushed into this memory then the second data is stacked on top of it and when you had to stack the third data it will be stacked on top of data 1 and data 2 and whenever the use of these data are done and not required anymore the data which is sitting top of the stack will be pulled out first so here the third data which was pushed at last and present at top of the stack will be pulled out first so here you can see the third data is popped out and the next time when you try to pop out your second data will be popped out than your last data so this works in leap for manner last in first out and this is stack memory present in data memory of SRAM and it is located at the end of SRAM as you can see this is present at end of the SRAM and it grows downward so while in empty state your stack pointer will point to the end of the memory let's say your stack pointer is size of 16 bits MSB and LSB of stack pointer so when there is nothing present in the stack memory means it is empty and just it has been initialized it will point to the end of SRAM this memory refers to the end of SRAM so after initialization your stack pointer will hold this value 85F and suppose you have pushed some data register R20 let's say you have pushed this data so now this R20 will be loaded at this position at last of the stack memory and now your stack pointer will point to this next location where you can further write data into the stack memory so this stack pointer value you can see it is 85E and if you pop out again this R20 after the use of this data so again your stack pointer will be decremented from 85E to 85F as you have popped out it from this stack memory so whenever you push some data your stack pointer will be decreased so here the value of a stack pointer is decreased from 85F to 85E and if you pop out so after the pop out this stack pointer value will again increase now let's see what is the actual use case of this stack memory so from your program let's say you have a main function from where you are calling another function called function A which is having some argument let's say XYZ anything and from A you are calling another function function b which is again having some arguments and from b again you are calling function c so here you have to jump from main to function a from function a to function b from function b to function c and once function c is executed completely you have to return back right so for that you need to track the return address of this function b similarly when execution of function b is completed then you have to return back where you have to return back to your function a your parent function so you need to store this address return address of function a where you have to return and similarly when the execution of function a is completed you have to return back where you have to return back to the main function so here also the return address inside the main function must be stored so in a stack memory basically when you call function a from the main memory so it will store the arguments whatever you are calling of this function a this argument will be stored inside the stack memory and then you have to store the return address of this main function so the return address of this main function you have to store so this is the main frame pointer so after the completion of function a you have to return to this address so this is your main function frame pointer and you might be having some local variables inside this function a 
so those local variables of function a must be stacked into the memory so that you can see function a local variables can be stored in this frame so this makes function a stack frame so for every function your stack frame will be stored inside or you can say for every function a stack frame will be pushed inside the stack memory similarly for function b when it was called from function a so argument of this function b is stored here and after storing the arguments of function b you have to store the return address of this function a so that return address is stored here so after the completion of function b you have to return to function a frame pointer so this is your function a frame pointer and after that in this stack frame for b you have to store the local variables of function b and similarly for function c the argument of this function c will be stored here and then the return address of function b where it has to return back after the completion of this function c so once function c is completed it has to return back to function b so that address that return address of function b will be stored here so this is your frame pointer for function b and then if you have some local variables for function c so that will be stored here and after storing all the frames your stack pointer will be pointing to the next location in the stack memory so this is how we use a stack memory to store local variables arguments and the return addresses of caller functions if main is calling function a so main is the caller function let's see with another example you have written a program which has a main function and you have written a print statement inside main function then taken a variable sum equals to 0 and you are calling then another function for addition add 2 comma 3 2 comma 3 are arguments and after the completion it has to return to this address right to print the summation value so here your execution will come to this location and while you are executing this statement your program counter let's say loaded with this location right msp is 1 lsp is 0 cross 50 the program counter tells what will be the next instruction to execute so it is saying this is your next location from where you had to take the instruction and execute which is pointing to this sum equals to add 2 comma 3 and when it comes here so it has to jump to this add function right okay so in this condition your stack pointer was already initialized and let's say nothing was stored in this stack memory so it is pointing to this location your stack pointer this is msb and this is lsb your msb is storing 0 cross 08 0 cross 08 and your lsb of a stack pointer is having value 0 cross ff so it is 0 cross 08 ff and now you have to store the return address of the main function because after completion it has to come back to this location right and this is 1 and 0 cross 50 was the address of this summation so your next will be let's say 1 and lsb is 0 cross 51 so next one is just i have incremented by 1 for simplicity so this value you have to stack into the stack memory so this was 50 and next one will be 0 cross 51 so now you have stored here and for simplicity i have not taken these arguments into the account otherwise you have to store these arguments as well okay just to explain i am not considering these two right now so you have pushed the content of program counter where it has to return back after executing this addition function so now your stack pointer will point to this decremented location 0 cross 08 fd earlier it was pointing to this location 0 cross 08 ff so now it is decremented and it will jump to this function address this is a subroutine you say so this program counter which is the value of this one is the address of program memory where this function is present so till this point after calling the subroutine this will be the state this r call is nothing but 
relative call you are calling this function and after the execution of this add function you have to return back to the main function right so by popping out this value from a stack you will get the return address of the main function where you have to return inside the main program so finally you will get this location loaded into your program counter so after return to main loop the stack is now empty again so this is again in empty state because your stack pointer will be loaded with this address 0 cross 08 ff as you can see here it is loaded with 0 cross 08 and 0 cross ff so you can say now in a stack memory you store n number of frames for the different functions all from the main function so let's say you were at this frame and from here you have called another function so another frame will be created for that and from this function again you have called this function so again another frame will be created and so on and whatever will be the last function that you have called will be treated as active frame and once you are done by executing all the instructions of this last active frame function you have to return back so for that you will pop out this frame so this stack memory basically stores temporary data which can either contain the argument of calling functions or some local variables of those calling functions these are the local variables that can be stored in the frame and the return address need to be stored there so these three things are stored inside the stack memories in their respective frames so in this frame the return address of previous function will be stored and minus one function from here the previous function return address will be stored and in this frame the return address of previous function will be stored that's how we store many frames in the stack memory and in case of recursive functions where you have not given the base condition it will try to create again and again frame for that and after some time your entire stack memory will be full so that will be a scenario of a stack overflow that is very oftenly seen in recursive function implementation and when you have popped out everything from a stack memory so that is the situation of a stack underflow so this was the small brief about a stack memory and a stack pointer thank you so much for watching this video and we'll continue with another feature of microcontroller in the next session stay tuned and keep learning and i'll see you soon